a systematic approach to organizing today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized and today we have a special show where we're going to be very clear and simple and systematic about organizing the systems, the simplicity, that is Marla D. Welcome to Keeping You Organized. Thank you. That's fabulous. <laughs> well, you're, we're in our countdown to NAPO and uh, we know you're going to be speaking this year on uh, what's your topic? Staying in business a decade and beyond, it's one thing to start a business, but it's another thing entirely to stay in business. You know, that's one, that, that's one thing we don't talk about uh, uh, that much is the entrepreneur side of, of, of organizing because a lot of professional organizers are entrepreneurs. And we know you teach a lot of entrepreneurs and to become professional organizers. What are some tips uh, that you can give us for the entrepreneur on how to stay organized? Well, it really does take systems that work. So I'm going to give you one of my best all-time tips. And that is to start each and every workday by tuning in for two minutes and writing down what are the three most important actions that I need to take today to create income for my business. And those actions typically need to be a phone call, an email, a card. They need to be conversation oriented. But those three actions are those people tend to put off, never get to, and those are what create ongoing relationships and best marketing you can do. And then do those three actions first. And that comes from my longtime coach and mentor, Mark LeBlanc. He was the former president of the National Speakers Association. His book is one of the ones I recommend called Growing Your Business, and it works. Well, it seems like a lot of people, uh, uh, someone who wants to get into professional organizing probably loves organizing, you know, has it in their blood, uh, but doesn't necessarily think about sales and marketing. Isn't that kind of what you're talking about there, trying to actually get the customers? Yeah, it's like the classic book, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, and he says every business has the technician, which is the organizer, the manager that needs to run the business, and then the visionary, the entrepreneur that has this vision of wanting to help people. Most people jump into having an organizing business because they want to help people, but they don't stop to think about the fact that it's going to require running a business. Mm. So I say go out and read the e-myth before you open your business, and then definitely look at getting some training and don't think that you can just go out there and do it you know, like you would when you're helping a friend. Now, you are, we kind of tease this a little bit, a systems kind of person. Yes. And um, I know you have several different systems. Uh, let's talk about maybe one of your more popular ones and, and how someone would implement the different steps of that. Okay, so you're referring to the systems that I've created that actually teach the skill. Is yes. that what you're That's wanting? That's correct. Mm-hmm. So as we talked about earlier, since only 10% of the human population on the planet Earth is born with the organizing gene, <laughs> the other 90% don't know where to start, what to do, or how to keep it up. So I realized my first year out there as an organizer in the field that I had to create something, a system for people to follow that would help them with that process. And so that's where STACKS came from, and STACKS stands for sort, toss, assign, contain, keep it up, and simplify. And here's the one thing I would share on STACKS that will make it different from anything you've ever done before. Most people, the moment they, they start to touch the stuff, right, mm -hmm. whether it's paper or tools or clothes, they start to sort it, and they're within two minutes off in the land of decision making. Should I keep it or let it go? Where is it going to go? What's it going to go in? How did it get here? What am I going to do? And then they get overwhelmed and they give up. So stacks, to teach it is you ask one question at a time and you make one decision at a time. So when you're sorting, that's all you do is sort. When you're done with the sort, you can see that you now have 125 of the same kind of white John. That's taken from a real client. And then the toss is a lot easier. And toss is just 
do I keep it or let it go? You still don't have to figure out where, where it's going to go or what it's going to go in. Do I keep it? Do I let it go? Once you're done with the toss, asking the question, assign where is it going to go, becomes easier because what you have left is what now needs a home. People can't go out and figure out where everything's going to go and what the containers are going to be before going through the sort and toss. Um, once you know where it's going to go, what shelf, what room, what area, then the containing becomes a whole bunch easier. The containing is the fun part. But I'm a big believer in making sure that those containers are something that you absolutely love and that you will use. That makes the big difference. And then once you have it all neatly contained, the keep it up becomes its own system mm -hmm. <laughs> because it doesn't magically stay in place. So the one tip I'll share with the keep it up is create a really simple map and make it visual. What do you need to do each day, each week, each month to maintain that space? And then the last step is simplify. And the tip I would give on that is choose just one organizing project for each season. Rather than thinking you have to organize your whole home, your whole office, your whole life, which is overwhelming, is there spring, summer, and fall, and then enjoy the rest of your time. Makes it easier. Well, let's talk about this system and how um, uh, is one part maybe more difficult than another or a certain type of personality, you know, thrive on one part versus another? Uh, you know, are they all equal? That is an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Here's what I found. Every single personality gets stuck on different steps in stacks. Some people are master sorters. They love it. You know, the, all you're doing is putting like with like. And they can do that so fast it's scary. Some people get completely stuck. They can't even figure out that like, well, that's a bill and that's a bank statement, you know. So they can't sort it and they need help. Other people get completely confused around containers. It's overwhelming, whereas some people think that's a blast. So my overall advice on that is try it out for yourself. You probably already know which steps you're good at and which you need help with. And then just get help on the ones that you need. So because toss is so hard, because letting go of the stuff, we think the stuff is our story, we think it's our value. That's why the whole industry of professional organizing exists right now. Because if people could let go on their own, they would. But they need help. What is the hardest thing that someone had to let go of when they were uh, working with you? Something that maybe you and I would think, well, that would be easy to let go, but they couldn't. Oh, wow. Um... The one that comes to my mind was a gentleman that I worked with for a long time that literally every single day, he started out his day by grabbing a yellow pad and making a list. And he had kept every single one of those yellow pads and every one of those lists. He had years worth of yellow pads with lists on them. And he couldn't let go of a list even though it was now years old because he thought there might be on one of those lists on one of those yellow pads that he still needed to do. Now, were the items crossed out on the list or were they still all yet to be done? There were usually a couple crossed out, but most of them still needed to be done. So really what he was doing was kind of a brain dump at the beginning of the day, but not necessarily following that list. Well, let me, let me take a little rabbit trail here because, uh, you know, sometimes when I think about to-do lists or lists that people make and uh, a lot of people teach, well, at the end of the day, you take that list and you write it on a new list for tomorrow. Uh, how do you handle to-do lists in your whole system? Oh, my goodness. The best system out there today is not one that I created, but it's one that I use. It's called the One Minute To-Do List. Mm. And I wish I could pronounce the author's name, but I cannot. It's... Um, We'll have to look that up. Yeah. But if you just Google one minute to do list, he has his PDF ebook that you can download for free. And basically, he says you've got the list that has to get done today, the list that's got to get done in the days, and then the list for 10 days and beyond. 
and I call it do it now, do it soon, do it later. Mm -hmm. And he actually teaches you in that little book how to keep track of your list. It is the smartest system I have ever seen because everybody always, they know so easily what really has to get done today. And the 10 days allows you to capture a full week and two weekends. And so we can actually make that list very easy also. But in that ebook, he teaches you how to keep them moving, how often you need to look at them. And I promise you, it's the best system out there. Well, that is, I, I love talking about systems. And we're, and we're going to continue our conversation in a moment. We're going to take a real quick break. And when we come back, I want to get more of your clear and simple advice. We are with uh, Marla D from clearsimple.com talking about organizing systems. We'll be right back. Looking for a file folder that can go the distance? Try new Flexi Folder from Smeed, the heavyweight folder with movable and erasable tabs. You'll find yourself using them again and again and again. The Smeed Flexi Folder is made of durable 14-point stock that stands up to wear and tear. The folder also features an extra wide one-third cut movable and erasable tab. This tab allows you to write, move, and erase it with ease, so as your filing needs change, your folders don't have to. These tabs are simple to install by simply punching the tab out of the sheet, using a permanent marker to label your tab, and positioning wherever it's needed. Once a project is over, erase the tab with a standard white eraser and you'll have a brand new folder. When it's time to rearrange that folder in the drawer, simply move the tab to a new position. Available in standard manila or bright primary colors, these heavy-duty folders will make a lasting impression on your file drawer. We are back now on Keeping You Organized on our countdown to NAPO, and one of the NAPO speakers this year is Marla D. from clearsimple.com. And uh, before the break, Marla, we were talking systems and to-do lists, and, and some people like to kind of geek out on that stuff, don't they? We're just Is that what happens <laughs> at NAPO? Do you guys sit and talk about, oh, I love your to-do list? Or <laughs> you know. We totally do. We get off on it, yes. Uh. <laughs> Show each other our containers and our systems, and um, it's it's almost like you know if you were sitting in an AA meeting <laughs> because we're, we we feel like we're junkies and we understand each other. But you know, as we said, ninety percent of the human population isn't like us, so it's kind of like we found our people. Yeah. Well, everyone likes to talk about success stories. Let let's talk about one of your clients uh, who maybe was pretty disorganized and then you brought the systematic approach to them. Kind of talk about the before and after and, and how it all worked out. Oh my goodness, I love that. So there's definitely a woman that comes to mind, Linda Beth, and when we first started to work together she had just retired as a school teacher and she loved information and she had a little room in her home that she wanted to use for her retirement office. <laughs> But it had about 30 years worth of accumulation, right? Paper, information, arts and crafts, photos. And um, she knew that wasn't going to work. So the funniest part of the story was she was working off a tiny little writing desk. So you know how we have those antique writing desks, right? That were designed for when we worked with a pen and a piece of paper. It was before we had computer and all of this huge volume of paper and information and all this stuff that we have today. So she ended up with all of these big plastic containers filled with paper and piles. And so in the course of working together, we got rid of the little writing desk and she went out and found the most beautiful U-shaped desk that went into that room and just brought in all of the tools and the systems that she needed to function. But let me share one practical thing that came out of that that I've used ever since. So there's a big difference between making purple or sorry, making paper vertical versus horizontal. So a horizontal incoming basket does not work. Vertical is what we do at the beginning of the day when we're ready to engage with the world, right? We get vertical. Horizontal is what we do at the end of the day when we're done. So a horizontal pile of paper means laid to rest. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes to deal with it. 
So just making your incoming paper and your action papers vertical makes a huge difference. So expand on that a little bit. So you're taking a an inbox and making it uh, like attached to the wall or just a, a, like, uh, I know Smeed, we have several vertical file kinds of things. Is that what you're using? Yeah, and a wall pocket. Mm-hmm that attaches to the wall. You can even get the ones that are magnetic that will attach to the side of the file drawer. You can get the ones that hang over the cubicle wall. So one of my big tips with paper is to capture the incoming, just like the incoming inbox for your email. You need one container and one location in your home and office that captures all of the incoming. So the mail, the receipts, those pieces of paper that you bring home through the course of the day, it all goes into one place. So you have one inbox, not three. Like sometimes you see the stacking trays where people have three or four inboxes. Is that because they are not getting through the papers quick enough? Typically, or you might have a couple different ones if you have very distinct roles. You know, like I have one for my personal life, one for my business in my home office, but. You know, you might have one for each person in the home, or if that person in their office has two very distinct roles that they play out, they could have two containers, but the idea is not to have multiples and not have them be horizontal. Well, that's awesome. Now, that brings up another uh, thought here about your own personal organizing system. Do you use a paper or electronic organizer? How do you get done all that you need to get done on a daily basis? Well, that's a fabulous question. <laughs> I like you, John. Oh, gosh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> what I do is what I have found most people do. We combine technology with paper. So I'll just go ahead and grab this is my day timer. It's the ARC system. It's made with the rings so that you can add paper, delete paper, but it also works like a spiral notebook so that you can do this. So I do plan out the bulk of my things on the computer. You know, I have all my calendar on the computer. I've got my contacts on the computer. But I have found that when it comes to a two-page month and the day, that everybody really needs to do it by hand. Everyone needs that two-page month at a glance, you know, because we're trying to fill in the bigs throughout the month. And you can't do that on your little smartphone. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't even hardly do it on an iPad. It really is easier to look at a piece of paper for the two-page month. And then when it comes to the week and the day, that's when time gets real. So our brains align with the number seven, and when we enter into the present time week, all of a sudden that stuff that we need to do gets gut level real, right? It's like, oh, I can't put that off any longer. So I'm a big believer in a 15-minute weekly planning session with yourself. That's the minimum. And writing down what are the most important things that I need to get done this week. And see, that goes right back to that list system that I talked about. But let me share one other piece that makes it even easier. If you will plan your week and your day according to your roles, rather than just a list of to-dos, it's actually much easier. So there's a great planner system out there called the Planner Pad, where you write at the top what the roles in your life are, and then what you need to get done for each role, and then what day you're going to do it on. And that's a much easier way to plan your week. Well, then you've got kind of the best of both worlds. You've got the holistic approach of all your different roles. You've got the, the visual view of the whole week. And we all start feeling better about ourselves, right? Because we're, we're getting more organized. Truly. It's a grounding thing. Kind of brings us back yeah. into our body and says, okay, I can do my life. This is good. Well, listen, we're, we're kind of running a little short on time. I want to give uh, uh, you the opportunity to tell people a little bit about what you do, your services. Uh, um, are you uh, doing things virtually, locally? Uh, who, who are good customers for you, and how can people get a hold of you? Well, thank you again. So clearsimple.com is the easiest way to get a hold of me. And what I would want to share is my passion in this industry is teaching the skill. So my vision at Clear and Simple is to help 10,000 families clear away their clutter 
and create beauty and order in their homes. So most of my offerings are actually educational. So on my website, I have a variety of eBooks and audios that are designed to teach the skills. See it, map it, do it in stacks. We have organizing for kids, your vital docs, your move, paper in time. My audio book is there. It's been out since 2007. It's, it's sold around the world, so my business is international. And all of those things are designed to help that person out there, to help you learn more about the ABCs of organizing so that you can go in and do it yourself. The other thing that I do, though, is I can connect you with an organizer who's trained and certified through me, so they really know their systems, they know the stuff, and they can come in and work with you if you don't want to do it yourself. And then the last thing I do is I train organizers. I've been doing that for over a decade now. So if you're one of those people who's born with a skill and you think you want to start a business, I can give you the SIS forms, the tools, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, and take the stress and the struggle out of it. That, that, that's awesome. Well, listen, uh, Marla, thank you so much for being a big giver of thank your time you. and uh, for sharing all these resources. It's clearsimple.com, and uh, we hope to have you on the show again in the future. Thanks so much, John. Loved it. Bye-bye. Right. It's uh, Marla D. from clearsimple.com today on Keeping You Organized.